there is a lot behind the Limelight products that often consumers might not be aware of. The whole approach to skincare, first of all, is to to deliver really beautiful, elegant, functional, active products that are made in a very clean way. And when I say clean, I mean in a way that is not only sustainable to the the environments where they're produced, but also that is something that it won't it won't deliver any kinds of damaging ingredients to the person who's using them and or the environment in which they're used. So things that go down the drain, things that end up in our ocean, things that end up with millions of people start using these ingredients that, you know, we all use like silicones and You've seen over the years things showing up in fish, the polyethylene beads that people use for exfoliants. You know, we've avoided those in, entirely. Working with really natural ingredients, you can produce a very active, very elegant um, skincare product. Dream Clean, featuring aloe vera, that's the primary ingredient, and then the water phase of the product is it's an ingredient that we get in a freeze dried form, which is the purest, most potent form of it, and that's what they use in burn victims that need to be treated post burn uh, to help heal and prevent scarring. So it's a very, very high end, kind of clean, you know, sterile ingredient. And as you know, we don't use anything that has any preservatives that are in the raw material that are not at least approvable for certification of natural and organic products. So this doesn't need any preservatives in the in the um, aloe vera juice, where if you just bought straight aloe vera juice, you'd have to have some preservative in it. So it's, it's a really expensive form of aloe vera and very potent form too. And it's the constituents that are the key constituents for soothing and repairing skin damage are, again, quantified and, and standardized. After that, we have the surfactants that are very mild and gentle to the skin that don't strip the skin lipid barrier. That's the cocoa glucoside, the sodium cocoyl glutamate, and the sodium lauryl lactylate. Those are the foaming ingredients in the product, and they're all made with water processes with non-GMO plant materials, corn, sugar, coconut, but they're harvested and processed in a sustainable way. So there there are two ways of processing surfactants and one of them involves petrochemical processing where you're using solvents and and bleaching agents and things like that. Where these are they're made in France and Germany where the and the environmental rules are very, very strict about how people do these kinds of things and they're also strict about uh, genetically modified ingredients too. They don't allow them. So these are some, you know, significantly there's more uh, thought and consciousness going into the processing of these and that's something a lot of consumers don't even realize when they see something that's the same name from one company versus another company. Uh, it could be coca glucoside and then there's that's the water process or there's coca glucoside and that's the petrochemical process. And there, they both exist out there in, in foaming products but this one is a very well done product, a really really well made ingredient. And then there are no residues e either in that ingredient that would contaminate the product. TCA, glycerol oleate, is a refatting agent. So when you use surfactants on your skin, naturally they break up the dirt and the soil that you have on your skin, make up and anything that, you know, environmental pollution, those kinds of things. Well, the glycerol oleate is a refatting agent that helps restore the lipid balance on your skin and maintain it so you're not stripping your skin away because when you do strip your skin away then your oil glands tend to overproduce oil and your skin gets greasy and oily so it's really a good balancing regulating kind of ingredient for the skin. We have an algae extract in there that's the spirulina platensis algae extract and that's something that has a lot of antioxidant protection in it. You've probably heard of spirulina. It's very lovely active ingredient on the skin. Um, Camellia sinensis, which is the white tea extract, another one that's very good for antioxidant protection. And these are, are particularly nice to put in a cleanser because usually in cleansers you think of them as just something you wash your face with. But I like to have something in there that actually the skin can benefit from in a very quick time because you don't leave, leave it on your skin, you rinse it away. 
yet this is something that will um, penetrate the skin very quickly. It's water-based ingredient, so it goes in nicely, and it kind of helps eliminate any potential redness and irritation that you might have um, from a cleanser, a foaming cleanser. The Sapindus mucorosi is the soap berry that is something that's been used for centuries. Uh, this comes from India, and it's a soap nut that is uh, from a tree. It's a little shrub that is in the lychee family. So if you can, you know what lychees look like, and soap nuts are similar. And it has saponins, natural saponins in it, which and this has been used for making soaps and for, you know, before people had could buy soaps even. And so there's a lot of good history there of its use. And it's really mild and leaves the skin feeling soft and, and nicely cleansed. The essential oil blend, rose, palmarosa, ylang ylang, lavender, chamomile, and those are all very good for the skin. Uh, not all essential oils um, are something we like to use on the face. I think these are particularly face-friendly essential oils, though, because they're, they're not irritating. They are antiseptic um, in themselves. They, they contribute a lot to the product, not just scent. Lavender is something that I believe really has a lot of therapeutic benefits for uh, healing the skin when you have abrasions and things like that and burns and stuff. So I know it has very good properties for cell renewal and those, those attributes that you want to have and uh, anything you put on your skin. The chamomile, let me tell you a little about the sources of these. The Roman chamomile is from uh, a farm in Italy. It's from the, the mountains above Torino. And it's uh, made by a fifth or I think sixth generation farm now. That's you know some. It's a beautiful old place that's been um, producing these beautiful essential oils and other herbal things, um, peppermint and uh, fennel and different herb crops for therapeutic use only, not perfumery, just for therapeutic use for all those generations. And the lavender, the um, lavandula angustifolia is from France, and again, that's from a family-owned distillery. It's been in their family for many generations. And in fact, um, we were there a few years ago, and they were telling us how it was, it was in their family when Napoleon came through and was claiming land for himself, and luckily didn't take theirs. But um, it's, it's a very wonderful farmhouse and distillery, and it's a cooperative where they work with farmers right around their their place, their distillery, and they do about 30 different herbs. Uh, and we have many others that we use in essential oils in, in their products as well. The Ilang Ilang is from Madagascar. And that, that's the island continent off the southeast coast of Africa. A very famous place for its variety of botanicals and its, its fauna, its uh, the plant, the lemurs, and uh, are one of the things that people have are very familiar with about Madagascar, but it used to be a French colony, and the French did plant a lot of things there. Ilang Ilang is indigenous. It was more on the Comoros Islands, um, away from Madagascar, but they started plantations uh, to grow Ilang, because it, it grows very well there. And they also started producing cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger and those kinds of things in, in this distillery that they started um, after it became a colony. The, the company that, that we work with is private family-owned business now, and Madagascar is a free market economy. And we were starting to work with them just when the, company, the country was transitioning from a socialist government to a free market economy, and that was 20-some years ago. The Palmarosa is from Nepal, and it's from a distiller who has been working um, to restore indigenous plants to Nepal, and he started a cooperative in several different areas of Nepal. He's Nepalese himself. His wife works with the United Nations, and she helps also um, on a different way of, of funding small businesses and doing those kinds of things. But they're both really involved in trying to restore the economies of these villages that have been, first of all, hurt by a lot of recent earthquakes, but there's a history of earthquakes there. So it's, they've had a difficult time doing anything but uh, agrarian kinds of things. So even the housing and those things uh, is something that he's working on helping them build earthquake proof housing. So any any capital that we help him get from selling his essential oils goes into that kind of work. The rose oil is 
from the famous Valley of the Roses in Bulgaria. And that is probably the most precious oil that exists, the essential oil rose. It takes about 2,000 pounds of rose petals to pick one pound, to get, produce one pound of essential oil. So if you can picture a room filled with 2,000 pounds of rose petals, that's what it takes to get one pound of essential oil. So it's a very expensive, beautiful essential oil, very impossible to recreate synthetically. When people buy a bottle of Dream Clean foaming cleanser, they are buying not just the product to clean their face, but they're supporting people all over the world who are growing things and, and working with the villages around them in an environmentally sensitive way. They're doing things sustainably uh, in Nepal, in Bulgaria, supporting small family farms and helping sustain those kinds of businesses. I really believe that these kinds of relationships and supporting these and having these types of ingredients in products that we use every day can do a lot just to keep relationships good with people all around the world. It's a mutual kind of reciprocal agreement we have, supporting also of things that are good for the environment and the processes that they use and don't, don't cause any damage.